said you love me as I am I take me as I am I say before who I am I chose indeed Tell me, tell me, tell me, say Love me as I am Take me as I am Accept me for who I am Dosh and Tirika Love me as I am Take me as I am Accept me for who I am Take me as I am, accept me for who I am, I'm yours indeed. Tell me, tell me, tell me, say. Love me as I am, take me as I am, accept me for who I am, yours indeed. Love me as I am, take me as I am, accept me for who I am. Hello everyone, welcome to Triple H. My name is Rati and today we are going to talk about depression, um, part of it relationship and divorce. So um, today I'm joined by one of, you're going to forgive me because I'm going to read her profile. She's a phenomenal lady and she has done a lot. So I'm going to give you her profile and um, Basically, so that you can know her. So um, today, the lady besides me, her name is uh, Prayers. Um, Prayers is uh, she's a vibrant and passionate entrepreneur and a business owner. Um, she started her first business when she was 18, Celeb Hair and Beauty Parlor. A dedicated Christian and her passion for world-class administ church administration, which led her to... Hillsong International Leadership College, where she got the knowledge in this field. And so much more. Prayers, welcome to our show. Thank you, Reti. So, Prayers, what is the most difficult choice you had to make um, in order for you to fulfill your destiny? Um, without a doubt, mm -hmm. I think the hardest thing the hardest choice I've ever had to make in my entire life is walking away from a toxic relationship. Um, reaching the point of saying, you know what, this is not working. We are good people, but we are not good together. Mm -hmm. And it was a very difficult decision because I had aspirations and hopes that it was going to be one of the key relationships, because it was my love life, okay. I thought it was going to be one of the key relationships that would lead me to fulfilling my own destiny and purpose. Mm -hmm. So it was very difficult, very traumatic, but once you do make the first step, it becomes much easier. Much easier. Yeah. From your relationship, you said you left um, a toxic relationship. From that... Um, Maybe let me not call it toxic. Okay. Let's say... It wasn't working. It wasn't working. It wasn't right. Mm -hmm. We thought it would be right. We planned for it to be right, but it didn't work out that way. Okay. Um, so from the society view of people, because obviously when this happened, um, there were a lot of people who were looking at you guys or a lot of people were admiring a relationship or relatives and friends. Um, did you receive maybe backlash or did you just soldier on and like whatever they think, let me just concentrate on my own personal? Oh, that happiness. was the greatest breaking point actually because um, my support system literally vanished. I lost friends, I lost family. That's the thing with divorce. You, you, you don't just lose a spouse, mm -hmm. but you lose a lot more than that. So society, yes, society does stigmatize, especially I had three, I have three children from my marriage. Mm -hmm. And there's this whole stigma with a woman with kids leaving. And then also there's the stigma, Yekuti mm Mvana, -hmm. and the stigma, Yekuti, maybe you were promiscuous. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of stigmatization. My support system fell away. And um, I broke for a while. I became probably, you can easily say, a rebel. Mm -hmm. I became a rebel 
because I didn't want to feel anything. I didn't want to face anything. I was just a disaster for a long time, about three to four years, until I finally healed and faced my situation the way it is, and I'm here today. Okay. Um, I heard you mentioning about um, kids. How did your um, kids manage to survive, or were they were young at that time, how did they manage to survive and be also able to accept that this is what happened, mommy and daddy, they are not together anymore? <laughs> Uh, I think for a long time we hid it away from them. I had to throw in a little lies, a, a few blue lies, because mm -hmm. I didn't know what to tell them. I'd never been divorced before, mm -hmm. and it was a taboo and unacceptable. My parents are marriage counselors, they are pastors, and it was such a big deal mm -hmm. for me to walk the road of divorce. Even um, up till now, I still get a lot of backlash from church people. Mm -hmm. So with my children, it was a difficult topic to talk about. It's only now that we actually do sit down and mention it to one another. But for them, it's also a separate trauma mm -hmm. because it's mom and dad. And they've got friends, they've got cousins, and people around them whose families are still together. When we go for pizza or we go for a visit at their school, mm -hmm. mom and dad will be together. And with us, it's different. Either yeah. they're going with dad or, or they're it's going, with, going mom. with mom. Mm -hmm. Or if their friends come back from holiday and say, we went to Victoria Falls with my mom and my dad. So it was very traumatic. And I think in a way it still is for my children. But I try as much as I can mm -hmm. to be there for them. Their father also tries as much as he can. Mm -hmm. And with God's grace, we are hoping, Kuti, one day we can actually reach a civilized platform of co-parenting. Mm -hmm. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go on a break. And when we come back, we are going to discuss on how she managed to deal with her depression. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Daddy love me as I am, I take me as I am, accept me for who I am, I chose and need. Tell me, tell me, tell me, say. Love me as I am, take me as I am, accept me for who I am, Dos and Dirica. Love me as I am, take me as I am, accept me for who I am. Welcome everyone. Um, we're going to continue talking and discussing about depression, divorce, and relationship. So prayers before the break, you said um, you went through a low point in depression. Can you share on how you managed to pull through? Because maybe there's a lady who's out there and who's also going through the same point, same situation, and they're looking for an escape or they're looking for a point where they want to have a happy moment and be themselves again. Okay. Um, I don't think I can compress everything in a few minutes, but I'll just try and mention a few things. The first thing that was very fortunate with me, God was so gracious because my parents, they stood by me. I'm grateful that they were there and they didn't judge me or make me feel the pain of disappointing them. So they just supported me. And even more, they were there for my children. They literally mothered and fathered my kids more than I did. And I'm very grateful for that. It helped me. While they were taking care of my children, mm -hmm. I was going through my motions. And one of the things that was uh, probably, I can call it a light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. was when I was introduced by um, one of my my ninis, mm -hmm. my mom's sister, to a program called Divorce Care. Mm -hmm. And this program, it was a support group. You know like how alcoholics attend a support group of alcoholics who are trying to mm -hmm. recover from yeah. alcoholism? Yes, so it was exactly that. 
it was a support group of people who are either divorced or somehow affected by divorce. And this support group would go there once a week for 12 weeks. And it became such a great source of strength. I had felt that, you know what, my life is over. I'm such a failure. Someone actually called me a reproach. And that was, it really hit hard on me. But when I attended this support group, it made me realize, you know what? This is not so bad after all. You can come out of it. It's going to be hard, it's going to be difficult, you're going to have to put some work and effort into it, but it's possible to actually recover. It's possible not to be addicted to painkillers, to mask the pain. It's possible not to depend on alcohol to mask the pain. It's possible for you to actually deal with pain, go through it, experience it, and heal, just like how you would get burnt. You're not going to be ignoring and covering that wound, and I don't want to see it. No, but you dress it, you clean it, you put medication. That's exactly how the wound of divorce, that's the best way to deal with it. It takes time. And also, the other thing I want to mention, my faith. I grew up in the church, um, Christian background. Like I said, I'm a PK, I'm a pastor's kid. So it's kind of like a automatic go-to when you're in a low point in life. It's automatic. You find yourself calling on the name of Jesus and shimandering in tongues because that's how we were raised. And it became a really great source as well for my strength. And um, at that time, I couldn't pray, though. I'll just start crying. But that crying, that release... There's something that God would also whisper into my heart. There's some sort of ministry of the Holy Spirit that happened that helped me. Um, some people don't believe in that, which is all right, but you definitely need a power greater than yourself. And for me, that is God and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, so what advice would you give to someone, to a person who is in a relationship because there are sometimes where people, they feel like, let me work on it. It will work. Let me work on it. But maybe you're not good for each other and separation or divorce is the best way. So what advice can you give to someone who is in a relationship where things are not working? Okay. <sighs> I'm going to be very personal as well with this one. It's okay. Most of the times, mm -hmm. I believe... There's nothing that is broken that cannot be healed. Mm -hmm. If it is broken, it's broken, yes, but it can be mended. That's what I believe. So I don't encourage divorce. I don't condone it either. But I encourage people to work at it. If you've done everything in your power, both of you, if you've both done everything in your power to save the marriage, and you reach a consensus, Kutisha, this, this is, is not it. working mm -hmm. for such and such a reason. Mm -hmm. Don't divorce on petty issues because things change, people change. Mm -hmm. The person I was when I got married at 24 is not the person that I was when I got divorced at 33. Mm -hmm. I was a totally different, different person. person. So people are works in progress. Show each other mercy and Really um, interrogate your reasons for divorce. Of course, gender-based violence and um, abuse, that's a deal breaker. Don't stay, leave. But there are other things that can actually be mended. And in our generation today, you'll realize there are a lot of things that could actually be mended. So don't rush it. Take your time and make sure it's the right decision. Uh, thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Um, lastly, um, what I would ask is, uh, when you discussed, uh, when we discussed later, like on your uh, divorce, you said when you were depressed, there's a support group that helped you. Um, as a possible, if you can just share a bit of information of that support group if they're here in Zimbabwe, so that a person to whoever is listening out there, they might be able to actually approach them 
then we can also put the contacts below so that at least they can go there for help. Okay, I'm not sure of the contacts, but okay. the support group is held at Celebration Center. Okay. It's normally once a week. We used to go on Wednesdays. I'm not sure if it's still like that. It's been six years, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But um, it's at Celebration Center. If you go to Celebration Center and just inquire about divorce care, I'm sure you will get the right information. Thank you, Prayers, for joining us thank today. And thank you for sharing your story and helping the ladies and everyone, actually, um, out there. So um, thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And this marks the end of our show. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share, and also comment below. I said you love me as I am. I take me as I am. Accept me for who I am. Chosen deed. Tell me, tell me, tell me, say. Love me as I am. Take me as I am. Accept me for who I am. Chosen deed. Love me as I am. Take me as I am. Accept me for who I am.